Hi everyone. Um, just waiting for uh, Ronnie to, to join us for the chat, but just quick uh, mention, obviously very sad day today for Snooker. Willie Thorne, one of the greatest characters the game's ever seen. Um, brilliant Snooker player as well, brilliant commentator. Um, yeah, really sad day for Snooker. Um, thoughts are with uh, Willie's family right now. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll certainly ask um, Ronnie when he's there, if he's got any... We'll see if Ronnie's there. Not quite not on yet. Oh, yeah, I think we've all known he's been ill for a while, but it's still, still a shock. And um, yeah, Snooker will be a, a less fun place um, without Willie, Willie around. So yeah, just waiting on Ronnie. Join in again. Thanks so much for all your questions, guys. Um, gone through them. Obviously, Ronnie's been on before, so um, try to get some different questions from, from, from the last time. And obviously, again, um, can't ask everyone's questions. I really apologise, but um, if I would be here, you know, I'll look here till midnight if I was asking every single question. So thanks again for all your input. watched a, a bit of that football um it's a bit weird with all fake crowd but it was definitely better watching on that channel than than the other channel was complete silence it was uh it felt actually okay actually i think cheers mr willie Nil nil wasn't the best match to start off with. Tour Championship um, starts Saturday. Um, we'll be doing it again from, from here uh, in my home studio. Um, first matchup, I think, is Neil Robertson versus Steve Maguire. Top eight players on this year's rankings. Um, Ronnie won't be playing. Um, but yeah, uh, after the Championship League, which was, was amazing, really, um, back to sort of proper tournament snooker. Rand one six zero seven. Hey Stephen. Hey Rand. Ironwood 1986, R.I.P. Willie Thorne, yep. Andy Rainbow, hi Stephen. Hi Andy Rainbow. Nicholas 8044, hello. Will surely be missed, he sure will. Craig Mahoney 370, hello. Cathay 4 GB, hi Stephen. Can you teach me how to cook, Stephen? <laughs> People don't want to see that, do they? I think he's coming. How are you doing? Yeah, good mate, not too bad. Not too bad. You all right? Yeah, not too bad. Sad day, wasn't it, today? Really? What, with Willie? Yeah. yeah. I know. Terrible. Gutted. Absolutely. Mm. I know you no. were like, 
be really good friends with, wouldn't you? Well, so was I, but I know you, mm. um, he had a soft spot for you, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's, I, I, I don't think anyone's got a bad word. To, I mean, I know he's had his, his faults and everything through there, but I mean, we've all got faults. But he said, uh, but who's got a bad word to say about him, really? I mean, he's just one of them characters, isn't he? No, exactly. Yeah, good, good company. You know, just like I said, you know, I said he's one of them, you know, like I've spent to Andy Goldstein today. I said, you know, like in the 80s, snooker was the perfect sport for all, you know, tobacco sponsors. It, it was like golf was today, you know, it had a lot mm. of glamour to it. I said, I'm not sure you'd have fitted well going down to Cooley Leisure Centre. <laughs> <laughs> no. Leisure Centre, it'd have been like, what am I doing here? <laughs> he's, he's, he's definitely a big, a big, big time, big time player. You know, like, J- J- Jimmy used to always say if he won the world championship, he'd turn up with a, a full length mink coat and play every shot from his chair with a long rest. He wouldn't <laughs> even get up. <laughs> um, he was quality, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, you, what do you have much, much to do with Willie through your career, or did yeah. you see some of your exhibitions, didn't he? Or yeah, we done a week in um, in Northern Ireland once, where we just done um, just like, every night just doing exhibitions, and uh, obviously that like, I, I think I was doing the plane and he was doing like the, the half an hour trick shots and the gags before. Yeah, and I never heard him before, and then the first night I thought, you know, what, it just it just had me laughing and laughing. Yeah. But at night it was just the same gags and the same jokes, but I laughed every time, even when I I was laughing before the punchline was coming because I knew it was going to say, but every time it was funny. Yeah. You know, one of them, he could deliver it, you know, fantastically well, you know. Yeah. Did you, did you ever play him as a pro? Um, I think I played him a few times. I can't remember exactly. I think I remember playing him in Dubai once. You you beat me in the semis. I think I played yeah. him like in you know, the quarters. Right. Yeah. But no, nah, I didn't have many many games with him. No. No. No, nah, I think what... he was quite on the decline then, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So what what's, uh, what was the championship league league like then, George? You you. you, you you, you seem to, when you got on the table, you seem to be enjoying. You seem to like really treat it seriously when you're on the table, but obviously the surroundings wasn't great. To be honest, I mean, I loved. I, everyone's asked me, you know, what's it like with no crowds? It must be terrible. And I was like, actually, and I actually really, really liked it because the the one, they love it. <laughs> <laughs> there's me on the tee, and there's you on the beat. <laughs> you know, it should be the other, people will be thinking it should be the other way round. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, you know, and for me, it was it was better because like, obviously there was like no expectation. Mm. Uh, normally, when you play in front of a crowd, you kind of think, you know, they're waiting for you to do something. But because there was no crowd, I was just sort of like, well, it doesn't really matter if I don't play well because there's no one here to sort of like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it kind of, it's like when you like you know, if you practice with someone, and you say, "Oh, come over, I'm the best in 19 or whatever." It's just it's like raw snooker, and it? it's like who's the best. There's no crowd, there's no surroundings, it's just like me against you. Who's the best snooker player kind of thing? Yeah. And I, I t- to be honest, yeah, my favourite tournament was always at Condon Park. You know, I, at first I thought, oh, it's going to be, but I went down there and it was just, for me, it was just like a really good practice session, but played, you know, very seriously where both players really want to win. So, you know, um, I, I really enjoyed the playing side of it. Yeah. Just sort of with the protocol of like having yeah. to, you know, um, be confined to a room you know and so yeah, yeah no nah, uh, if, if that was I think for me is that sustainable you know if every tournament was going to be like that I would probably only have to play like I probably only play like three or four events a year because yeah. I spend my time like that do you know what I mean I know some of the other players the feedback is that they really loved it you know but mm. I think the reason why a lot of them loved it was because obviously free hotel free food and snooker and mm. you know most of the snooker players I'm not sure they're that much into their fitness I think they just they're happy with a cheap <laughs> and, a, and a few frames of snooker with me I like to do my running I like to you know sort of stay in a nice hotel have nice surroundings mm. but there was none of that there you know so I struggled with it to be honest with you and um, yeah did you, watch, did, you, did you watch the end of it I mean it was quite it was, some of the groups were quite exciting I thought when it came down at the end it was like that final was unbelievable I thought it was fantastic. You know, I watched, um, I think I, it gets to the stage now where I, I, I can't watch good players playing players that can't win. You know what I mean? You've got a lot of these players now. Mm. You know, if there's two, like, decent players, and when I say decent, I look at, like, you know, once you get to, like, the Ricky Walden, sort of that sort of level, I call them still, that's the top quality player. Yeah. That, I just think most of them are just sort of, like, they're just, 
they don't even look like snooker players. You know, they don't even they don't you know they, they they're never going to be able to win. Mm. And I've just kind of got to the point where I've tried to. Sometimes, uh, you know, you watch it and you think, oh, you, but there's no point sometimes. You know, like when you see Bingham playing Luca Purcell or Wollaston playing, you know, them playing Day, you think, you know, anything could happen here. If one of them hits a bit of form, you know, it's it's a good mm. game to watch. But I think it was hard watching the earlier group matches because a lot a lot of the players just, yeah. I don't actually play and they will never be able to play. So it becomes, for me, I don't enjoy watching that type of competition. Yeah. You think, yeah, you know, I, th I think it'd be quite good. You know, if you had like the top sixteen and just like four groups, I think it'd be a good event. And, and that sort of the, the way they've done it, that like, the top sixteen do it, yeah, four, but not in seedings, just like an open draw, four groups, and then you got like I think it'd be a, a good event. I think you could have. I think there's thirty-two top quality players in the world, mm. but not that the rest of them are just sort of like they can they they can actually turn people away from the sport. Because I speak to a lot of people now. And there's there's a lot of snooker on TV, but if there's good matches and to watch, then you never get yeah. bored. A lot of people are getting a bit cheesed off, you know, because there'll be there'll be a match on the TV, and my mate will text me and go, "I can't watch this. They're useless. Or this and that." But they love snooker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, did you, snooker, did you? You know, it's good snooker. So for me, you know, when you listen to a lot of the people that like, like the proper snooker fans, they'll watch snooker all day long if it's good snooker. Too yeah. good. Other. But when you get a player that you know he can make hundred, they can make one four sevens, but they can't play and they never yeah. be able to play. So I think you can have thirty two players in, in a thing like that, and any one of them thirty two players could win the tournament. But yeah, yeah I think the format was great. You know, I like the group. Yeah. group thing, so there was there were, there was some there was some tough. I mean, there were, I mean, Nigel Bond and O'Donnell taking three hours for four frames was just. I, I don't even know how that can happen. I mean, I, I mean, everyone can have a forty-five minute frame. Even, even you've had them. I've had them, everyone. If the balls go scrappy, but three hours that was. But that, I mean, that that was that was pretty brutal to watch. But that that group finished. I think about one o'clock. There was still over a hundred thousand people watching. Really, a hundred thousand. Yeah. Mm, over. I think. I think the high the highest was about just under half a million. But I mean, obviously, there's, there's been no snooker for for a while. But it's still, it just it was a, in, incredible viewing figures. Yeah, I mean, hundred thousand at one o'clock in the morning. Really, you know, um, yeah. Unless they fell asleep with a telly on. It <laughs> 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 could, uh, could could happen. Will you will you watch next week any or will you watch any tour championship? No, definitely, because obviously it's like you know it's eight fantastic players playing. Yeah. Every match be a brilliant match. Um, mm. Obviously, it'd be nice to be seeing the best seventeens because yeah, you know, it's nice to see them go head to head like that. But even still, best of elevens is still going to be fantastic. So. Mm. No, I'm looking forward to to watching 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 the snooker. Yeah. Well, so when um, because you, what are you going to do? Press? Are you going to when are you going to play again before the world? Are you going to wait until? Uh. Then are you going to keep playing or? The Champions League. I, I didn't pick my queue up, and in the last two days, I just played for like an hour each day. Yeah. I just like leading up to that Championships League, I was playing a little bit, and I just it kind of like, you know, I was getting a bit, you know, if you don't do nothing, you can get a bit bored. So I just found just playing snooker for the fun of it without playing with any you know you know just having a bit of fun with it you know no mm. pressure so I've, 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 I think I'll continue to play just for like maybe an hour a day yeah. for one of hours of play if, if, I, if I go in there and after 20 minutes I've had enough I'll just put my cue down you know I just yeah. I think just at this time it's um, you just got to just keep yourself occupied and just do whatever you want to do you know yeah if, if, if the academy's open we go there in Sheffield and play before I've said to myself since this lockdown, I refuse to go into another snooker club. Yeah, uh, not that bothered. I, like, if it gets back to normal, I'm going to play more competitions, so as right. hopefully more matches, and then I won't need to practice. And if I do practice, then like 45 minutes or an hour on my own will be absolutely more than enough. So, the idea of playing more tournaments was that I could practice less. You know, so yeah, yeah. Don't ever want to go into another snooker club again. Have you still got your barge in, in Sheffield? Huh? Have you still got your barge in Sheffield? No, I sold it. Oh, I did. I was going to say you stay there, wouldn't you? If you were if you're going up there, but you, you sold it. Yeah, I sold it. Yeah, I just didn't use it enough, you know. Right. Just get rid of it. It was just a waste, really. One yeah. day, you know, buy from snooker, and I decide it's something that I want to do. Go and live on the water, then you know maybe. But at the moment, um, I just never got enough use out of it. But yeah, yeah. no, I, Sheff I think Sheffield's definitely go ahead. So yeah getting up there but obviously just wait and see what the what the protocol is you know if it's going to yeah. be like teams, then you know um, 
you know, if I, if I crack up, <laughs> you know, because of the lockdown, put you under. Yeah. Not, you've got to put your, your happiness and your sanity before. But I'll try, you know, I'm going to go there and try yeah. it. Well, yeah. Because what, the World Championships, because you have to do a test before every match there, right? Um, at yeah. Champions League. So you, you, so you won't have to do that at Sheffield every single like, well, day, surely. That's the, that's the thing. I mean, because the first test I had in Milton Keynes was fine, but the second test they'd done, he must have shoved it up my nose so hard and up so high. That he I, watched, I watched Ian Poulter do it on Instagram today. It looks horrific. Yeah, but he ruptured my nostrils. So basically, I had a runny nose for two days. Right. So I, when I was playing, I was just constantly sniffing. And I, it was just like dribbling. You know, my right. nose was dribbling. And I thought, I'm not going to put myself through that two or three times a week, you know, if something shoved up my nose. So... Like I said, you know, it's one of them. You just go there. If it's okay, you know, you can put up with whatever it is, then great. But if, if, it, if it gets to the point where you just think, I'm just cracking up. Because it was, I did feel like that in Milton Keynes, you know, mm. stuck in a room for 24 hours with no windows and eating the food that they offered you, which was like airplane food. You know, it just, yeah. it, it, for me, every now and again, it's fine. But doing it over 17 days or doing that oh. for every it's not sustainable for me. I'd just, I'd rather not live. Well, if, I mean, if you've got to stay in a room for that 17 mm. days, you can't come out. And then if you do, I mean, that's just, that's kind of a nightmare for anyone. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I just think, um, but they might have to do that. They might have to do that to, to get the tournament to go ahead. But I, I don't see why they would be doing it because obviously, mm. they're, um, you know, people are out shopping there, non-essential shops are open. So when you see that going on, you think, well, why, why am I having to be confined to just, a second floor of a hotel and just a crucible venue and, and not able to get out and get in any fresh air. So, mm. like you say, you know, I think you just have to sort of go there, try it out and do your best and, yeah. you know, your sanity and your mental health first. You know what I mean? Some people, mm. I think some people really liked it at Milton Keynes. They kind of got into the groove of it and it was okay for them. But everybody, yeah. knows, everybody reacts to that sort of situation differently, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've I've never minded being stuck in like hotel. I could cope with hotels staying about seventeen days. I don't know whether you're not being able to go actually anywhere. I, I don't I don't know whether that's that's a long that's a long time. But I mean, I know I know players were obviously delighted just to get played snooker again, weren't they? They just it was just yeah. amazing. But um, so I've got I've got I went through got questions again. So I tried to get different ones from last time. I tried to yeah. get through. There's a lot of same questions. So um, so are you ready for these? Yeah, I'm ready. Mate. <laughs> Right, this one from, um, have you ever been to Rosa's Thai Cafe in London? Who? Rosa's Thai Cafe. It's like Thai, Thai food. It's really, I've got the, the recipe books. I've started cooking some recipes and, and I've copied them in and they've the followed me in that. So they've, they've sent a question, does he like Thai food? Love Thai food. Right, you should get but, this book because the recipes are amazing. Okay, so where's their restaurant in London? I think they've got two or three. There's, there's one in Covent Garden, yeah. uh, just off Carnaby, not Covent Garden, just off Carnaby Street. There might be one in Covent Garden, so I don't know. And that, that's, um, but I've, not, I've not actually never been to the restaurant. I just got the book because I just okay. got the cookbooks. But yeah, so yeah, so you, you, you love the Thai food. I love it. Yeah. It's the best. <laughs> when I went to Thailand, I don't know, it was two or three years ago, the best food I'd ever eaten. Obviously, like, I was there with some friends who lived, obviously they took me to all some fantastic restaurants, but I've never, ever tasted food so nice. Mm. As what I it was just unbelievable. Yeah. What, 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 what do you like to cook? What, what kind of food do you cook? Um, a lot of my food would be sort of just grilled fish, grilled chicken, sweet potato, salad, vegetables. I try to eat healthy if I can, um, like 100% of the time, knowing that yeah. there's going to be times where I can't eat healthy. Um, I seen you had yeah, a barbecue. It was on your story the other day. Did you, did you cook that, did you? No, we just ran some friends and um, oh, okay. get some bits and pieces there. So, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, Zambax, underscore, Zambax, underscore. If you were coming through now, would would you like all these tournaments? Like, if you were like just turned pro, would you love this? Yeah, I think I think if I was coming through now, um, yeah, I would absolutely. Yeah, I think I would. I think I think I think snook now is a young man's sport. Mm. Don't have a wife. Don't have a girlfriend. Don't have no kids. If you've got no distractions, um, mm. great because you, all you do is you're travelling around, playing snook, doing something you love. Plenty of playing opportunities, which is great. Um, so yeah, but I mean, if you've got a family and all that sort of stuff, then it then it becomes a little bit tricky, you know. So, mm. um, but I, I I just think that we had it the best. Well, you had it the best. It was in the nineties, the eighties, the nineties, and the two thousands. You know, when obviously tobacco sponsors involved every event. Mm. So 
felt like a fantastic event where now, you know, some of the events you go to, um, you know, not the best venues in the world. Like, you know, sometimes you go to a venue and you love the venue, it inspires you to want to play well. You know, like you had the Civic Centre at Motherwell. I used to think that was a fantastic venue. Mm. Brilliant place, no good goffs. Theatres theater, were always the best. Leisure centres are horrible. They're good for exhibitions, but for tournaments, they're not. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but I mean, listen, yeah, I think I think as many playing opportunities is is great. It's what mm. you want, you know. Yeah. Uh, Nur underscore Mudassar to how does it feel to be known as the best snooker player ever? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think we have to share that tag, don't we? You know, because no, I don't. I don't, know. I don't. It's never for me to sort of say that. And if anyone ever asks me, I always say you're the greatest because to me you are. You you was like the Tiger Woods of our sport. Do you know what I mean? But the thing is, Tiger, when it, people always ask me, and I, and I think you're the greatest now, you've, t- you've taken over whatever anyway, but, but when Tiger Woods, they asked him if it was him or Jack Nicholas, and he said, as long as you're in the conversation, you've yeah. done all right. As long as yeah. you're in the conversation. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, but I mean, it's like, it's, you know, it feels good though, doesn't it? I mean, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> what, to be in the conversation? Yeah, well, to be the best, when people say the best, it's, it feels good, it can't not feel good, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it's nice. Listen, you know, you know I, I love the sport, I love the game. Um, I always say if it wasn't for you, Steve Davis, John Higgins and Mark Williams, would have mm. I been the player I was today? I think we all drove each other on mm. to be, you know, Davis drove you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you drove me on. John Higgins, you know, I, I was thinking, right, you know, you'd hear stories, what he was up to, and it just motivate you to want to, you know, mm. be the best you can be. So, you know, John Higgins was a fantastic player. Mm. And for me, to be in that, in that bracket, you know, um, I, th- I was saying to myself, I think to be an all-time great, you've got to have at least four world titles. Because I think John Higgins is the is the benchmark. You can't not say John Higgins is not an all-time great. Mm. So, so he should, I believe he should have had more world titles, but you know, I, I don't know. But um, but I think to be a true great, I think you have to go by the majors as well, like the Masters, the UK. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah, that's a benchmark. I think. Thing in snooker that stayed constant, like mm. the. Th- Majors, a bit like mm. golf. They might have more tournaments nowadays, but there's still only three majors. So I think yeah. that's the way you can judge how great a snooker player was. So you obviously put Davis in that bracket, John Higgins, yourself, and me, you know, mm. and Mark Williams and, and Selby. Yeah. yeah. He's up on a few majors. Uh, rock and roll underscore star one. What kind of diet do you use to get in good shape? Oh, you know, um, I just, I just you... try to stay away from sources and and just keep my food as bland as possible and obviously try not to have massive portions and stuff like that. Mm. But obviously I exercise quite a lot. I'm doing like seven, eight mile runs every day at the moment. So I'm burning a lot, a lot off. Um, mm. yeah, I just good food because I just think it's like a car. You, you know, you buy a fantastic car. You won't go and put like a cheap old petrol in there. You want to put the best oil in there, the best petrol. You want to get the best yeah. out. Yeah. I don't know why we should be any different, you know? And, um, mm. Yeah. Um, Matt Thomas D four. Would you ever, would you ever go to a school to talk about positive mental attitudes? Like go to schools and teach kids about stuff. Like, does that interest you at all? Absolutely. Yeah, I always think it's great, great to give back. And um, yeah, I think people like me and you have got a lot to. You know, there's not there's not many people in in their own field that have been the best at ever at what they do. So there's me, mm. you. It's, and I think that that's sort of like um, it's like a mindset. When you've got that mindset, not you know, mm. only very few people know what it's like to you know be the best at what they do for like a long period of time. So yeah, I think it's I think we have something to offer, and it would be nice to maybe. Uh, I think I think I think te- teaching kids is like is like is like a work ethic. I think so many people are lazy now. Yeah, they just they just want everything given to them. It's like that's, I mean, we like work like five, six, seven hours a day, and I think that's that's just as important as obviously positive men- positive mental attitude is, is important in all walks of life. But if you want to get somewhere, you got to work. That's yeah, what I think. I mean, I, I mean, I always remember like when I was growing, coming through the program at the tournaments, and I'd watch you, and I'd watch Davis, and you'd always be on the you know practice table when you was meant to be there. I remember you lost in Birmingham once, and you was getting a flight to Thailand the next day, and I got in at ten o'clock in the morning. And you was on the practice table already practicing. I thought you got beat yesterday, but you're my <laughs> Thailand. I'm that's because Do- that's because Doyle was cracking the whip. <laughs> <I had to laughs> <practice. What? laughs> but it, it was yeah. I had... Whatever it was, it worked, you know. And, mm. and at that point, it must have got through to you to go. You know what? You know that you know. Yeah. I, I, I need I know to get, it does, yeah. 
know, and, and my dad was a bit like that with me, you know, and, and then obviously when he went away, I got a bit lazy. Um, mm. But then, you know, I'd see you and I'd see John Higgins, I'd see Davis doing it and I'd feel guilty if I wasn't doing it. So like mm. I said, people like you and Davis and, Hing and, and Higgins that, that, that showed me the way you had to, you know, if I want to be the best that I can be, that you've got to be dedicated, you know, work hard, like you said. Mm. Yeah. Um, Andy Bizzle, 88, says, any lower ranked players you see as a future world champion? Um, Anyone you've seen? Oh. <laughs> Not the ones you seen last week, then. <laughs> oh. No one. I, th I think there really isn't. Um, listen, I've, I've, I've not seen anyone come through. I mean, the, the, the young Chinese guy is good. Is, is good the left-hander. Yeah, is he um, yeah he, he's, he, he seems very talented. But, I mean, in terms of UK players, I don't, I don't, I don't know the scene, the amateur scene or the, or the professional scene down the rankings, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean... There isn't really. Do you know what I thought was quite? It could, it could be good. Um, he played in my group. Um, I can't remember his name in the second group. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil, Neil was raving about about him. Um, Craigie, Sam Craigie. And I, I, I didn't realise he was only twenty six, and he's got a, he's got a great technique. He's got mm. a lot of, you know, hits the ball really well. I just think if he could like be dedicated, I've heard like. But he's twenty six already. I mean. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's too late, I think. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I know, but when you look around, you just think, who's out there? Like, you know, that's any good, you know? And I know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So it's, it's like, you know, it's like I'm still playing. Forty-four Higgins, forty-four. We shouldn't still be competing, really. I just think <laughs> been lucky that no one's the, the the fresh crop haven't been that good to sort yeah. of not hurt, you know. Uh, Kian Lynam two four one. If you could achieve one more thing in snooker, what would it be? Um, one more thing in snooker. Obviously, you want to win the world championships because there's nothing, mm. nothing like playing at the Crucible, playing well, and, and winning the tournament. Um, but really, I suppose I, I don't really have anything. You know, um, any goals or no? Nah, there's nothing really. But obviously, you know, another world title would be nice. I suppose. Right, rankings don't bother you. Um, nah, not really. I mean, if I was bothered about the rankings, I'd probably play a lot, lot more tournaments. But yeah. I just thought, if I'm, if I'm playing well and I'm semi sort of sharp, then I feel like I've got half a chance of winning any tournament I'm playing. Um, obviously, I don't want to drop around the rankings too far because um, that's you know rankings don't lie. So you mm. know, as long as I'm playing well, competing, and like I said, I want to play a bit more next year if I can, just to sharpen my game up a little bit more and yeah, yeah and where it takes me. Uh, Danny underscore Swagman, uh, if you could replay one match, which one would it be? Which would it be? Um, uh, um, tough, tough question, isn't it, to think of one. As, Good or bad? Huh? Good or bad? A loss or a win? What do you mean? What do you mean? If you could play, well, that's all right. If you could play any game again, I'm just saying it, it could be a good match, it could be a bad match, it could be like... I I think for me, I think the match that I'd like to play again would be Selby in the 2014 final because I'd play it yeah. differently. Right, you know, okay. I would have done everything I could have done to not get bogged down and just yeah. see if I could get the game open because when I look back about it, I thought I got sucked into his game. And it wasn't until after that game that I thought, yeah, I might lose to you and I probably will lose to you again, but it's mm. going to be on terms. And if you're yeah, going to, yeah. like, I'm just going to blast them open. Mm. Yeah, you can have that one but I'm not getting sucked into like eight nine frames where it takes like 50 minute frames because it just it destroys you you know so it was because um, I, obviously I was in the studio and in a commentary box and it was like every frame that you got in first you won yeah and then if you didn't get in first yeah that was it it was his frame it was unbelievable I tried to compete with him and like play that sort of game I could see that yeah you could see that I don't want to like but then when I, I, I sat, sat back I thought that I just kind of like lost my own rhythm. So I'd rather mm. lose three frames in a spin, but keep my own rhythm. Yeah. Because at least given a chance, I could go bang, bang, bang and win three frames back to yeah. back. Yeah. Got to the point where even if he'd have left me amongst the balls, I weren't even going to make 20 because I just, I just had no rhythm. So I think I learned a lot. So there's certain players that have got your number. And I think Selby kind of had my number for a bit. You know, he kind of, mm. you know, I struggled against him. Even though I had victories against him, but I thought, you know what? Yeah, I might lose to you in whatever match it is, but it'll be on my terms. Yeah. Every, yeah. Ever, ever since I've played like that, I've enjoyed every game I've had against him, even if yeah. I've lost it. Well, Woodjinx Hamilton, the last three or four years, he's just not been the same player at all. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I just think um, just just I, people come. I mean, he was number one by by a mile. Yeah, yeah. And then was just I, maybe he just got too comfortable. I don't know, but do you know what? Personally. When you we think this is like an easy game, and it's not an easy game. And you think mm. like, and he thinks know, too much about it as well. I think he goes too deep into. It, I think. And to, uh, yeah, and I just think to be at the top of the game for any longer, you know, if you can stay at the top of the game for three, four, five years, you've done well. So mm. try and stay 10, 15 years. Yeah, you and Davis done it, but there hasn't been anybody else that's really done it. I've had spells where I've been good for two, three years. Yeah, I've hanged around a lot longer, but to sustain that and be at the top for that long, mm. it's really, really hard. And I just think nowadays, you know, Judd might rule the world for the next four or five years. If he can do it for 10, brilliant, but it's, mm. it's hard yeah, yeah. stay on top unless you're like someone like you davis tiger woods schumacher where you were just it, it took a generation to catch yeah. up i think that. i think yeah i think what you were saying earlier about having families and having wives and everything i think um with judd um i mean i don't people run i don't want to tell people to run their lives and that but if he stays single just yeah. him and his brother that would be massive for him i think and how, how many much he's going to win the next Absolutely. few years Absolutely, I think you know he's thirty. If he can stay single, like you say, and just travel, which I think he will, because you, you, you have to make sacrifices. You've got to be ruthless if you want to be at the top in any sport, not just snooker. Plus, you, you know, it's, it's not a bad life being single and you know just playing sport and doing what you want when mm. you want to. Seems to think, oh, I've got to be into a relationship. But really, if I could have had my time again, I'd have probably stayed single forever and just <laughs> been selfish and just sort of like, mm. sort of like you know. But, you know, but it is, yeah. But you have, I mean, you have, you have to be selfish, and it's, I mean, it's affected my life. It's affected like Steve, Steve's life, so many sportsmen you see, and it's yeah. affected the life because they're so single-minded to get to the top. And yes. unfortunately, that's a you, you can't do it any other way. I don't think. Um, no. But but you got to be ruthless. You have to be, yeah. Yeah. Um, D- Oxley ninety-five. If you could be a professional at any other sport, what would it be? Um, I think I'd like to be like a Formula One driver. I always right. had a thought, like driving fast, uh, like a bit of an adrenaline buzz. Yeah, yeah. You you drive mental, don't you? You drive really fast, don't you? I used to. <laughs> so many times that I just I went I went and I went and retook my test again. Not t- took my test, but I went to this driving instructor who just kind of just ironed out all my faults. I right. Spent, now I'm sort of like I'm Mister Safety Conscious when I'm in a car. You know, I just uh, <laughs> now I know all the. The reasons why there's speed limits on the roads and this and that, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't like to take liberties now. So mm. I've calmed down a lot. <laughs> um, Tahir Vazivdar says, "What are your thoughts on never being nominated for the Sports Person of the Year?" Is uh, that, I, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's a scandal. But I mean, even even if people don't like snooker, you know, I mean, there's a panel in there that vote, and even if they don't like snooker, that's fair enough. But they mm. can't like they, when you won five ranking events. When you won, I mean, it's just like. I think I think what it is now. So I suppose when snooker in the eighties and the nineties was like it doesn't bother you, does it? It doesn't bother you. You don't lose any sleep over it. I wouldn't have thought so. I've never ever been to sports personality. That's like that's like the idea. <laughs> You'd probably win it. and You wouldn't go. <laughs> yeah, that's my worst nightmare. The thought of like, like they sent me an invitation every year, but I just couldn't think of anything worse than going <laughs> some not really knowing him. I'm looking at them going, "Hi, oh, you're right. You're right." You're right, you're right. <laughs> So in a way, I'm glad I haven't been nominated. Um, well, not glad. I'm just saying it's not mm. my thing. Um, it was better in the old days because he used to have it in a much smaller place venue, yeah. and it was just like maybe 200 people, all the, all the top sportsmen. So you could go it. But now it's like in these massive big. But the NEC. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just too too I'm much. Or like it's like a concert. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah. oh, fuck! Oh, imagine that walking out in front of them. I'd be like, ooh, it's <laughs> too much. Um, David underscore McCrandles, if you could play a match against any player, past or present, in their prime, who would it be? Say a final of the world. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd say you, to be honest, yeah. The final, yeah, we never played a final. Played yeah, two we, semis, two semis, but. But I'd, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd love, yeah, I just think, like, watch playing you. I mean, yeah, you gave me some, like, Big hidings. I remember early in my career, you were like, Yeah, vice versa, vice versa. I played once in the Dr. Martin's League, and you had like 140, 130. I just sat there, mate. Honestly, I just I just wanted the, the grand to open up and swallow me. <laughs> There's some players that can do that to you. You were one, John Higgins is one, and possibly Judd Trump, you know, where you can mm. just totally 
smashed to pieces and you haven't really done a lot wrong, you know. So I wouldn't want to play you in the World Championships if it was like that. But if we were both really well, then mm. I think we had a match once in, um, in, in Torquay. In right. the final televised, but I remember playing you there and we both played really well. So, yeah. favourite matches because we just mm. went, both went for everything and cleared up if, if, it, if they went in the first red winning, you know. Yeah. Um, Dr. Underscore Vahid underscore Shirazi, tell us the secret of his Q action. Do you think your Q what? action's changed? You're, the secret of your Q action. I've got about, <laughs> it, this is just, but I've got about 50 Q actions. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I know, I've got a few. Griffith, when Griffiths was coaching me, he used to say, I can't believe you win. You win like a tournament. You win every match. You're a different Q action. I oh, know, but honestly, I'm a lot better now than I used to be. But honestly, I've had nightmares with like. I mean, I, I can't even watch myself play sometimes because I watch it and I just think, oh yeah, I don't like that. I don't like this. So mm. I don't self anymore. Um, but yeah, I've had so many different Q actions, and I just, I just think that's just part and parcel of a, you know. You're always tweaking about, and sometimes mm. when you change, sometimes it's it's, it's no one would even notice. It's only you. So mm. it might be using this finger that, or I'm a bit more square on, or I'm a bit more yeah. shorter. So although you think you've made a change, you probably haven't really. It's just more psychological. Yeah, yeah. What well, what amazes me when you when you play a match and you suddenly say, "Oh my God, you're cueing well there," but you know you feel inside you were like rotten. I mean that the one four seven I made against Bingham. I mean I paid like about five good shots in that one four seven. <laughs> And everyone's like, oh, my, that was unbelievable. But I was like, I'm, and inside, I'm, I'm having to try so hard to pot the ball because I know I'm queuing like an absolute. It's horrendous. I don't, again, when I played Ali Carter, I think I made five centuries in the best nine. One of them was a one four seven. I thought, I know they're going to ask me what I thought. And I went, oh, I said, I just didn't feel like I was queuing that well. And then, <laughs> his head. But actually, you know, I wasn't. But, you know, for some reason, they just... They went in that day, you know. Who, who, who do you reckon's got the best Q action? Who, who, who do you think's got a great Q action? Say, I think Neil Robertson. I'd have to say he's got the best yeah. Q. I mean, do you know what I mean? He's just sort of like he strokes the ball well. He doesn't move on the shot. Mm. Um, I think I think Judd hits the ball more powerful and accurate than anybody. Yeah, it's huge because it gives him um, an advantage to play shots that no one else can. Mm. I know he's got, like queuing across the ball that he does yeah you'd never tell him when you watch him to learn you would never tell him to watch yeah. Judd Trump but it, but him that can get away with that because he's so mm. tough but you know Judd does hit the ball very very well and he's very mm. powerful and I think that's why he gets away with it because um, mm. he doesn't rely so much on timing because he's just so flat through the ball yeah. I think if you were just going to pick a technique out and go you know I'd have to say probably Neil Robertson I mean I love the way Johnny yeah. hits the ball because yeah. I think He's got the ability to play much more better touch shots, um, but you know it's um, yeah. I mean, there's, 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 there's so many players that hit the ball well, but yeah, I probably mm. have to. I mean, Ding hits the ball nice, you know, yeah. around the nice. So yeah, there's a few reactions out there. Yeah, um, the real John Sewell said, "What's it like on the road traveling from country to country?" You like you you you, you like tra I love traveling. Yeah, see, see, what it is is I love, I love being, I love my home life so much right. that when I'm weighing up whether to go away, I'm thinking, you know, I, I'm giving up some of the stuff that I love doing at home. Do you know what I mean? So every morning I'm over repping forest, running. Mm. I'm in the gym, or you know, I just, you know, I just, I just like being at home. Um, but yeah, listen, I don't mind travelling. You know, I love, go I love going to China. So I've got some mm. good friends out there. So when I go there, I love, I, I can spend three, four weeks out there, no problem. Yeah. I miss it. I miss it. I miss the food so much. I just well, oh. this one I go. Oh. And the way they look after you as well out there, mm. you know, good life out there, really. Yeah. So China's like, you know. So yeah, I do. I do like traveling. I do like being on the road, but also, you know, um, I, you know, it's hard when you've got family and that at home. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke. I spoke to a friend in China yesterday, and, and there, there was a, a a thing where the COVID broke out again in Beijing. It's a seafood market or something. So <laughs> apparently, forty nine people were tested positive. And they're saying in China it came from salmon that came from Europe that was packaged, yes, frozen. Right. And they say like the virus is, can survive frozen. Wow. So they say so obviously the virus that came and it's gone all the way, and that's how they're saying these people have got it from from fish that's come from here. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I, I mean I've, I've just never heard that said before, but someone said it was on the chopping board that they were cutting the fish on or something, so it got him through the fish with the chopping board. Yeah. Apparently. I don't know. About, I don't know. It's scary. Yeah, really. yeah. Um, 
Oh, Patu911, what inspired the moustache? You knew there'd be one question about that. Um, <laughs> when lockdown happened, I sort of like set myself a challenge. I thought I would just like grow a beard and just see where I'd get with it. But then that got too itchy. And then Layla said, you know, oh, I think the moustache looks really good. You know, try and grow. So I thought, all right, I'll keep the moustache. And, uh, and now I've got it. I, lo I love it. I love it. <laughs> I thought you looked like Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sullivan. Da da Dan Lee's Dan in 147. How much do you like the loud shouts from the crowd? Like, like again, you know, that, that, that brings its pressure in itself, you know. Like, I, I remember I played John Higgins in Scotland once and I had everyone against me and I thought, oh, actually quite, I really enjoyed it, you know what I mean? Because mm. you, know, you want to go in there and you know, silence the crowd in a way. And I played Doherty as well in Ireland. And I just think it just G's you up so much mm. more. And when you've got the crowd on your side, you kind of like, if you don't come through, you feel like you've let them all down, you know? So that's yeah. like self, which I, which I feel, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. listen, I've got, I mean, I, I I love the support that I've had from the, the snooker fans all over mm. the world. I mean, and, you know, I've enjoyed sort of, you know, I've enjoyed my snooker and I'm glad that they've enjoyed Watching, watching me play too, you know? Yeah, I remember when I used to play Jimmy in the finals of the world and obviously this, yeah. he had 95% 90, of the support um, and they were booing me and everything, but I loved it. I was just like, I'll stick it up. But um, but, he, but I, I always thought when he was struggling and they were still cheering him, I thought that's worse, worse pressure. Yeah. I thought it was like, I, I don't know, I couldn't handle it. I don't know. I mean, I've never been popular, so it's been all right. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard because you feel like you've got to try and make something happen, you know, and you mm. feel like you're you're letting a lot of people down when actually you're not, but you, that's how you feel, you know, especially mm -hmm. if you're sitting there and you're getting like smashed up as well. It's, it's a horrible feeling, you know? Yeah. I always think it's worse than exhibitions. You know, people have paid money to come and watch you play and, you, and they want you to make you make centuries and everything. And then they're like, come on, come on. And then you start missing and you get the, What's the old in, tut in exhibitions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then there's like, and then if you're under more pressure, cause you're like, yeah, you're like, <laughs> I would say there's more, more pressure in an exhibition because they literally have paid money to come and mm. see you. Yeah. Or, <laughs> our Friday night. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> they ain't give us a one four seven. <laughs> so, way you know, like, you know, they. I always say that there's more pressure in exhibitions. So, um, and then, but then in a way, there's less pressure because obviously, like tournament snooker brings a different kind of pressure. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes the, the snooker fans, if you go into a snooker club, they just want to see it. Basically, if you go and do an exhibition in a snooker club. Every one of them there is a snooker fan, and they've watched you play over the years. They've mm. watched me for years, and they just go, you know what? It's just good to see them. Yeah, yeah. How I kind of get around that one, and I, and I must admit, I maybe done three hundred exhibitions in my life. I might have stunk the place out once or twice. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, on the whole, they just kind of like they've supported you all, all your life, and they, and they, and they and they love snooker. So just to get them to, to for them to see you up, then they just want to touch you sometimes. Yeah, like, oh. yeah. I know that's. But it's it's they they appreciate you know the, the the last maximum I made was an exhibition in Wales it must have been about four years ago for that but so I played eight frames it was like a, like a conservative club or something there was only about two hundred people in but the first seven frames I'm not kidding you I couldn't make thirty it yeah, was yeah. embarrassing honestly I, I was what to I went to Lee I would say I'm sorry you have your money back I was like and I made a maximum in the last frame couldn't believe it. <laughs> came from nowhere. <laughs> and then no, that's all they remember it's like oh. but the way you've got to look at that is is like Maradona walked in a room yeah he might be overweight but he's still Maradona I'm still going to go look that, that geezer was like the greatest footballer that's ever lived and that's the way people look at you you might not be able to make 30 but go you know what he's a seven time world champion he was like unbelievable that's what they say yeah. but I know and I had to learn how to kind of turn that around because I was like that's why Steve Peters helped me out a lot because I was so hard on myself mm. he was like they just listen. You can't play well over there. They just they just want to see you. And yeah. I'm like, really? I know. Yeah. So you kind of like have to turn it around sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you still speak to him? Yeah, yeah. I've got him on speed dial. You know, I have to have Steve. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I was on the phone to him like three times a day while I was in Milton Keynes. I was like, Steve, <laughs> <laughs> just go home. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. Go home. I kissed us. Stoney says, at the end of your US series, um, you said you had a newfound respect for pool. How, how so? Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, like, you, like a lot of people look at it, they go, oh, the big pockets, you know, you can't miss and you can't this and that. But it's just, it's, it's a different game, you know. I, I was playing shots where I thought, oh, I've left that safe and he's coming off cushions and parting the ball. And I'm thinking, 
at first I thought that was lucky, but then like when they're doing it frame after frame, there's obviously there's a skill involved. And you watch someone like um, Ephraim Reyes play; he was like unbelievable. He's like a mm. genius. Mm. He could play. He could play snooker, billiards. He was just that talented, you know. So. Um, yeah, it's a different kind of sport, but I always think, you know, if a snooker player dedicated himself to nine ball for a year, 18 months, whatever it was. Oh, I'd clean up. you clean up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, th- I always say, because I play a bit, of, you've never played Chinese eight ball, have you? Never played it. I'd like to play it. Yeah, it looks... yeah I think it's, it's hard. It's a good, it's a, I think it's the best form of pool because it's, uh, you, you need to, like, have a bit of knowledge and taking balls off cushions and stuff, but yeah. it's, it's all about patterns and I've played it and, like, I've, I've, I've potted one off the break and you only got six balls to pot. And you yeah. start to play like snooker type shots, positional shots. And yeah. all of a sudden you've got what you're in no you've got no man's land with two balls to go and you think, how's that happened? Have you ever spoke to a pool player about how to read a, 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 a pool table, how to clear them up? No, I mean I spoke to like Gareth Potts and Chris Mel when they've been over in China, but I don't I've, I've no no I've no incentive to get that good at it anyway, but um Look at clearing up a table. Yeah. They work from the black to the, the last ball, to the one before. Do you see what I'm saying? They don't yeah, yeah, back. yeah. It's, it's patterns, yeah. Really? They went, yeah, that's got to be my last ball to get on the black. Yeah. I, was, I didn't, I couldn't, as soon as I said that, I was like, wow, no wonder I like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, the pattern's right. Uh, let's see, because lots of time for it. For um, Dima, I'm trying to find his name, Dima, Dimitra, Dima, <laughs> I don't know. When when you get apologised, by the way, who his name is, I've, I've just absolutely ruined it. When your game is rusty, how do you recognise it? What's what's the first thing you notice? Cue ball control or just missing pots or rusty? Um, do you know what? For me, I, I never feel rusty, even if I've had like three, four months off. I go on the table for the first two. Well, no, three... no, you knocked a ton first frame last week, didn't you? Just like yeah, three days, I think. Um, I feel like. Hold on, things ain't quite right, so I have to sort of like I fiddle about, and all of a sudden I start hitting balls, and then I oh, okay, I'm on it. And then the only time I feel rusty is when I'm. It's not like I don't feel like I'm playing well. It's just that I, I feel like when I go into a tournament and I haven't played many t- any tournaments, and everybody's played like six, seven tournaments. I then notice it because I feel right. like I'm on pace, and I feel like I'm second to the punch, and then I think. Why am I like struggling? And I feel like I'm playing all right against this guy, but I'm struggling. And th- and that mm. might last like two or three tournaments. But by the fourth tournament, bang, I'm beating them players comfortable and easy. Yeah. So the only time I feel rusty is when I haven't played enough matches. You mm. know, I'm in, in practice mode. I feel like I'm queuing well. Mm. A bit careless. I'm a bit lackadaisical. You know, you know, you just kind of... Yeah, yeah. Slop- I, I also... Yeah. I also wonder when you used to have like... When snooker was... You were under snooker in the summer, so you used to have seven, eight weeks off. Yeah, and and we used to start again the first tour. I never used to think I was bang on it until I'd cleared up from fifty sixty behind. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. that that that's a more more good yardstick than making yeah. a century because you make a century from anywhere. Exactly. But when you but you but when you steal a frame, then then that's when you know you're you're sharp as back. Sharp as back. That matches. You kind of like that happens. You know, you go forty fifty behind, and you you might you know you might not clear up the first time, but then you do a do a good mm. clear pressure, and then you go, and then and then everything seems to tighten up. You become like. You're playing match snooker in a way, mm. and the more you play that, then you know it's you know like when you when you've like like the, the best snooker I think you ever play is about a week after you've just won the world championships. Yeah. I always world championships. I have a week off. I go and do some exhibitions. I play nine frames and make nine tons. One of them being a match. <laughs> but it's because you've got that seventeen days behind you. You've just won the world title, and you just feel like you know it's, it's like the peacock. The feathers mm. are out. You know, you, just, <laughs> you got the mink coat on. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> pumped up. You know, so. Fine. Uh, J- Jaffet Thunadkat says, "How many cues has he owned?" For me. Man- yeah, many cues have you gone through in your career? I've probably gone through about five. I think it's about five cues in my career. Okay. Which is quite a lot, really, because I think when you get a cue that you like, you think, "Oh, right, I'm going to keep this for the rest of my life." Mm. Um, but I think like you, when you when you, your queue got busted up, you tr- you tried a new queue out and you, you said, I wish I'd have done this mm. 10 years because they've got so much more power, these new queues. Yeah. So, yeah, I think sometimes it's good to have a change of a new queue just to sort of give you like the motivation to want to play again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, so looking for new ways to, to reignite that f- love for the game, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Underscore Al Ali 07, Ronnie 2012 versus Ronnie 2020, who wins? 
Ah, uh, two twelve, I think. I really? think. I yeah, I think Ronnie 2007, 2008 beats Ronnie 2012. Right. And my best snook in 2007, yeah. um, I won the UK, I won the Worlds. I was playing really, really well. Um, don't get me wrong, I played really, really well in 2012. And, you know, so I don't know, I just think all I've done is I've, I've, I've accepted. It's like, it's, like, it's like Ford or Mercedes. They bring a new version out every four or five years. And I've. <laughs> I've tried to do that. I've tried to think there's no point in me staying the same. You know, I look at players mm. coming, they do that better than me. So I've had to reinvent myself, remodel, re change a few things in my Q action, yeah. try and sort of improve myself. Do you think a better, a better winner now, though? A better match winner now, though? Yeah, yeah. I think since working with Steve Peters, he's kind of turned me into how you was. You know, if, mm. if you wouldn't need Steve Peters because you were so. You thought, right, you know, with me, I was a bit too emotional. If it was good, yeah, it was great. If it was bad, I was like, oh, I want to get out of here. And that's 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 the wrong attitude to have. And I've learned now mm. just to suck it up, whether it's good or bad. Stay in the moment. You know, anything can turn around at any point. Snooker is a very, very fickle game. And just, just staying in the game is just, is, that's all you can do sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, what's to do? Eden Shara, one four seven. It must be the pro, the, the pro. This is a, this is a deep one. How would you define your personality as a human being? <laughs> define my personality. Idea. Oh right? <laughs> <laughs> well, how long have we got? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just a just just. Um, I don't know. A bit of a bit, a bit of a rebel, I suppose. Uh, I, I don't mm. mean to be a rebel, and I sometimes think, why do I? Why, why am I not a conformist? But I was like this when I was at school, even when I was 10, 11. You know, I just wouldn't listen to anybody. If someone told me, right, they've got to do that, I'd be like, nah, mate. I just didn't have it in me to do it. So it's not like I've, you know, a lot of people say I'm an attention seeker. I just don't like being told what to do. And the minute someone tells me what to do, I'm like, fuck you. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm. I just can't deal with it, you know. So um, I wish I wasn't like that, but that's just how I am. Have you say when you're doing other things like um, well, running or what, what other stuff? Have you got the same will to win, the same as as in snooker, or is it is it just in snooker you've got that? that? Yeah, I t for me, I just want to be the best that I can be, and I just and I sometimes think I don't know how you felt, but did you did did you did it bother you if you played well or not? Did you or is it just about getting the win? Hmm. It's a hard. I mean, get, getting the win was 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 good, but I, I had to, I had to play well, really. I, I didn't and didn't enjoy it the same. Um, I mean, but the, to me, the, the 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 win was the most important thing. Yeah, that's me, why. That's why. I, that's why I stopped so early because I was like, I, I couldn't yeah. win anymore. I couldn't. Well, it's both. What, I couldn't. I couldn't win and I couldn't play. So I was like, <laughs> double well, trouble. I said, like for me, I, I I've played tournaments, played terrible, won, and felt like suicidal. I said, but I've lost matches and played really well and thought, yeah, I can't wait for the next tournament. Mm, yeah. And for me, uh, how did I play? Which is the wrong way to be because I yeah. was like, and that's that's why I've changed. I'm a lot more yeah. like you. It's about the win. It's about sometimes getting through, getting a job done, mm. lift a fight a day. Um, yeah, that, that's what I was saying earlier, but you've been much a much better match yeah. winner now because you're, you're prepared to graft, aren't you, to get the win? I mean, I mean that, that even last week, I could tell you were like grafting on the table. You were like, you know, but just this didn't happen. But I think once the penny drops, like with me, the penny dropped once I started working with Steve Peters, it's very hard to go back to how I was pre-Steve Peters because mm. pre-Steve Peters, I was like, I was, I was all over the gaff, really. Yeah, I'd win tournaments if I was on it, but if I was off of it, mm. no chance. Whereas now, since working with Steve Pete, I've won so many tournaments where I've gone into it feeling like I'm playing absolutely terrible. And because I've had the right mindset, I've kind of worked my way into it, got to the quarters, started to fly. And then I've won like three, four tournaments off the back of that. And I'm thinking that, that happened pre-Steve Peters. So mm. I've kind of, I'm a different, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a much better at, you know, I'm a winning machine now. Because yeah. you, know? you probably would have won more tournaments if you were like that because the amount, the amount of tournaments that I won were the first and second rounds I was awful they yeah. got somehow got through through yeah. just will, will to win and then going and win it so if, if you'd have had you, you'd, you'd have probably won a lot more probably won a bit more but I was watching the Tiger Woods uh, documentary the other yeah day. I watched that yeah he said I've never ever won a tournament where I've played well from start to finish mm. and I just think it's, it's, it's really hard to play 
fantastic. There's been the odd tournament where I think from ball one to the end, yeah, I've absolutely flown out my brains. Mm. But like you say, I think it's important just to have that mindset of where you're prepared to grind it out. You know, I'm not, I'm not prepared to grind out a career. I'm prepared mm. to grind out a few matches. Yeah, yeah. I'm not in my makeup to grind out tournaments like Selby. I'm never going to be able to do that. But yeah. For every- Every now and again, if I've got to like, you know, suck it up for two or three matches, then that's what's got to be done, you know. Yeah. Um, Henry GSR, eat out or cook dinner? Uh, oh, uh, for me, I just I love just being. I'm a home bird. I love being indoors. Oh. Cooking, I can't tea. wait. I just can't wait to look at a menu. I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I love cooking. It's my passion and everything. But I just want something to cook for me now. Like, just bring me food. <laughs> I, I do. I love eating out when I'm at tournaments because I, you yeah. know, you local but where i live where i live i've got to go like 15 miles into london to, to get a decent meal and it takes me like yeah. an hour to drive there mate and it's just so much hassle yeah i can't be bothered but if i'm at tournaments mm. then i love eating out i love going to a restaurant you know it's fantastic mm. yeah all right i'll let uh, i'm going to get chucked off anyway because we're, we're out of time but i appreciate you doing this again uh, I really no appreciate worries. it i really appreciate it and uh good good fun and um well i'm, I'm back to work saturday to your championship yeah. All day, so um, and hopefully, well, I don't think I don't think we're going to be in Sheffield. I think we're doing it from Stockley Park. Okay, you like so, it. Um, so, good. Really? Oh, I don't, I don't know, I don't. I'd rather be at Sheffield, but yeah, no, no. But have you got the hotel across the road? Or oh, no, I'll just I'll travel. It's like half an hour from me. I'll stop to travel. Yeah, no, yeah it's got not too bad. So they got a gym there, restaurant. It's it's a it's a nice little place. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. All right, mate. Thanks very much. Speak to you soon. Stay stay safe. (laughs) See you later. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Ah, cool. Cool chat there with um, with Ronnie. Went went on so long. So many questions. Again, once again, guys, thanks very much. Couldn't have done it without you. Um, Apologise to anyone who never had their their questions uh, asked. But um, hopefully see you soon. Tour Championship starts Saturday, ITV4, 1 o'clock. See you then.